Hello and welcome to another movie show brought to you by our pals at Odeon Cinemas. This week we'll be talking Transformers The Last Night and casting an eye over Twice Shy and Hampstead. We'll also be discussing the departure of Phil Lord and Chris Miller from the Han Solo Star Wars project and the career of Daniel Day-Lewis who has apparently uh, retired despite making two odd films a decade, something like that. Our competition this week is for four VIP tickets to Odeon who are offering 50% off selected films until Monday, June 26th. To win those VIP tickets, tell us which Irish actor starred in the last Transformers film, so the fourth Transformers film. Comment below and we will pick a winner on Monday and tag them. Uh, as always, joined by movie editor Brian Lloyd. There we go. And Dee Malumbi, yeah. uh, staff writer. Uh, you're going to be away next week, Dee, so we're going to need to, yeah. we're gonna need to we might bring both the lads in, maybe Max Ramsworth, the guy behind the guy. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, God, the horrors. We have, Super them fight, <laughs> have, them fight, have them fight to the death, yeah. Max and Dave, maybe. What do we think? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Get them fighting shirtless, yeah. That'd be good, yeah. <laughs> Put that on Facebook Live, that was, yeah. That was a real insight into Brian there, wasn't it? <laughs> fighting uh, shirtless. Okay, le- okay. The other night, news kind of broke that Daniel Day Lewis, uh, I say this kind of ironically, that Daniel Day Lewis had retired. retired. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the be- best actors ever. Yeah. There's no, ever, there's, ever. there's no questioning how no. good an actor that man is, right? No. He's made two films a decade. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe three in the last yeah, decade. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Um, and people are acting like he just bought the farm, like he's dead. Daniel Lewis isn't dead, lads. Yeah. Daniel Lewis he's didn't make here. that many films anyway. <laughs> uh, what was your reaction uh, to the news, Brian? It's to be expected. To be it's the Paul Thomas Anderson movie coming out in yeah, December. Phantom Thread, it's called. Yeah, and to be honest now, poor Paul Thomas Anderson, because there is a lot of pressure on him now for this film to be amazing, because it's going to be Daniel Day Lewis's last film. I don't know. Like to be honest, I would think myself that uh, he won't be gone for long. I think. Well, like I say, he'd be gone for long. I think this is not him retiring. This is him taking a break because he's retired before. Don't forget, like when between, I think he did Jim Sheridan's The Boxer, and then he took a break for something like five or six years, and then he came back and did Gangs in New York. Yeah. And in that time period, he was like making shoes in Venice or something like that. No, really, yeah, yeah, that's what he did. Like for that for that time period, like and people thought that he had retired. So I don't know. Like I would, it would not surprise me in the space of the next. 10 years or something like that he comes back and is brilliant again you know I just don't like because even like Steven Soderbergh for example Steven Soderbergh said that he was going to retire as well so, and speaking of and Steven Soderbergh yeah. Soderbergh offered him the lead role in Solaris mm-hmm. apparently he like he, re- he really chased him for that lead role in Solaris do you think that this is a way of Daniel Day Lewis kind of saying look hey, just leave my agent alone just leave me alone maybe take five or six years and then yeah. start looking at scripts again do you really think he's, he's finished I think I think that's like more likely like you said it does seem like a kind of Daniel Day-Lewis move to just completely fade <laughs> into obscurity for like years even up to a decade and decide to like come back for like a really you know good big project you know um, so I, I would tend to agree that uh, he's not gone and as well the way he did it just like releasing this super short statement uh, through his spokesperson to Variety it's just he's gone such a like weird but Daniel Day-Lewis way <laughs> of doing it yeah. Um, so yeah I, I very much doubt it's the end of him but if so sad sad three Oscars five yeah. nominations he's mm. kind of like the opposite of Robert De Niro <laughs> but you oh, know Jesus. isn't well, he like, like he's like it's Robert a fair De kept it, gone, like, like going out going out with, with, a, with a Paul Thomas Anderson yeah. movie and you know yeah and it's a good point it's it's a fair point you make as well about the fact that like you know Robert De Niro was one of his heroes and now Jesus look at Robert De Niro and it's depressing like, yeah. you know but um, he's working with Scorsese and, and, uh, and the, the Irishman Irish yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough but even High still like, for that one. yeah but then Dirty Grandpa and then there's like Righteous Kill and then there's like Big Dirty Grandpa was gas <laughs> saying it's just a wide wind up but anyways <laughs> that no, guy I, I, a comedic I, genius but I think that like yeah, I, I, this is not the last we've seen of Daniel De Lewis. I, I really don't think so. And like, it's it's actually funny you mentioned that point about like this is literally people telling his agent to leave him alone because mm. like he was even in discussion for like the Last Jedi. Apparently, he took a meeting with Kathleen Kennedy on pre-production and that. And you just like no way Daniel De Lewis yeah. is going to do a Star Wars film. So yeah. to, to speak of, speaking of Kathleen Kennedy, and it actually might have led into why you know he had the conversation with her because. Uh, he started in, in Lincoln, obviously, yeah. mm-hmm. as, as Abraham Lincoln for Spielberg, who'd worked with Kathleen and Kennedy a bunch. That's right. The, this is kind of, it, it's really unusual news mm-hmm. that, the, that the two guys who were directing uh, the Star Wars Han Solo movie, yeah. production is halfway through, nearly finished, and, they, and, yeah. they, and apparently there was tension on set, and they've left the project. Yeah, that's right. So this is Phil Lord and Chris Miller have just left the Han Solo, um, you know, spin-off project. So yeah, it's really kind of strange. Um, apparently, they were feuding a lot with Kathleen uh, Kennedy, who's like the 
uh, president of Lucasfilm. So obviously someone who you don't want on your bad side. And who is the other one? Lawrence Kasdan. Oh, Lawrence it? Kasdan, who's who wrote like, it, yeah. Yeah, who's like a co-writer on it and a major exec producer. Like he's been there since like Empire Strikes Back, a co-writer on that. So basically people you don't want to be feuding with. I mean, I think that what they've been saying about this is that it's due to creative differences. And what I would think happened was they wanted to bring in these two guys, you know, those the ones that did the Lego movie, the 21 Jump Street. They could bring this kind of quirky side to the Han Solo project. And then they came in and they decided that basically their kind of interpretation, their quirkiness didn't really fit in with the Han Solo project. So I would reckon it's something like that kind of happened and it just ended up falling just apart and going to shit. Start. Yeah. Brian, it's not something to be said for, you know, getting talented director or directors in there and leaving them alone. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, we've seen it with like James Gunn and a bunch of other directors who weren't obvious choices for big movies. Yeah. Um, and ended up knocking it out of the park Paddy Jenkins m- more recently with yeah. Wonder Woman mm-hmm. yeah. just leave them alone and let them do their job yeah but at the same time as well though I mean there is a long history of like indie directors and what have you being brought into these major uh, studio films and then leaving before the whole thing kicks off like don't forget mm-hmm. like Edgar Wright left uh, Ant-Man just before it was about to start uh, filming Mark Romanek walked off the set of The Wolfman I would love to see that movie. I would love to Andrew see that Kevin film. Walker Wolfman script yeah. Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins playing could have been incredible. Werewolves. Could have like, been incredible. Could've. Yeah. Yeah. And then like there was another one as well. Like Michelle McLaren was supposed to do Wonder Woman and then she left that as well. You know, so yeah, so like it's 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 unusual, definitely, but it's not so unusual what's more unusual about this is the fact that, as Dee was saying, they only had four weeks left of filming when they walked off the set and this has been filming since January so there's a good chunk of this film already made there was rumours on Rogue One uh, I don't know how substantiated they yeah. are Brian uh, about, Tony Gilroy. about yeah. Tony Gilroy coming in to shoot some uh, to reshoot some scenes is this normal in this universe now do we think mm, like no it's not, that's like, not good, but I mean it's, the director's guild are going to get involved in this they're going to have to they're going to have to there's going to be arbitration on this because yeah. what's, what names are going to appear in the credits d- depending on who comes in that, that's going to get mm-hmm. very tricky yeah very very messy and like you know, I mean, w- apparently what happened with Tony Gilroy and Gareth Edwards was was that Gareth Edwards apparently couldn't get a handle on how to do like the kind of the smaller, more emotional scenes and Tony Gilroy was brought in to just oversee it and basically help with the actors and yeah. stuff like that and Gareth Edwards was kind of watching in the wings. Uh, but that was from what I heard from that. It's kind of like the opposite of a second unit director. Exactly, right? yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. like, you come in and handle the actual emotions. Yeah. So I'll, just, I'll just take the wide shots. I'll just take the wide shots. But like, having said that though, like I think Gareth Edwards did that willingly in the sense that he was like look I can't get a grip on this please help me yeah. and then Tony mm-hmm. Gilroy came in this on the other hand is like they like Variety is saying that Phil Lord and Chris Miller were fired it wasn't a case of they left by mutual consent they were fired apparently and that's a nuclear option like you know that sort of way that's literally like right we can't work this any further goodbye so because they, they, they would have been aware that the reverberation mm-hmm. of this kind of news is going to have on the project you yeah. know people are yeah. going to be like oh they're gonna have the knife sharpened for it now that's just it and ver- as well what that variety report was saying was that they were full-on like fighting with you know these major like players in the game and everything so it's kind of yeah it's a it's a very vicious and it's a very kind of tricky game right now like you know what can you do with regards to kind of picking your directors from the start should they be going for like more conservative more indie directors ones with not as strong a creative vision you know so it kind of brings up this whole question of like what's kind of Lucasfilm's next move the reason why you probably don't see a Michael Mann or David Fincher directing Mm. films like this because you have to leave them alone yeah Um, anyway we'll move on so another director of that ilk (laughs) <laughs> I feel bad I really like Michael Bay as an action director I love Bad Boys I love The Rock um, but the Transformers The Last Night mm-hmm. it's the fifth in the series I actually quite like 13 Hours I, I really did I thought it was for exactly what it was yeah. I love seeing John Krasinski in an action role and it's mad that a film like that is like a that's a little indie project for Michael Bay um, between Transformers movies mm-hmm. this is 2 hours 40 minutes long it's actually 2 hours 30 30 so minutes it's not as those bad 10 as minutes are important it is <laughs> So this is this is it, you've seen the other ones. Yeah. Is it a similar? Mark Wahlberg is back. Jack Rayner's not back. Yeah, I mean it's ba- it's basically the same. I actually found myself defending my review against Brian yeah. Lloyd this morning because I gave it two stars as opposed to one star. Oh, really? So that was interesting. Um, I mean, it's not as bad. The fourth one was dire. 
like the fourth one was unwatchable Awful. bad I, I was just questioning myself why am I watching this movie why am I watching this movie but I have an obsession with like finishing something yeah. so that's why I finished <laughs> the fourth film but I really don't know why um, so it's not as bad as that but I mean it's look it's pretty much what you'd expect of Michael Bay it's not as like insulting or objectifying to women as it usually is so I found that a bit of a relief and I still don't think Megan, it's Megan Fox yeah. isn't it as soon as Megan Fox <laughs> but they've made like the lead girl really look like Megan Fox yeah. like she's pretty much across between Megan Fox and Elizabeth Hurley it's, oh, it's quite just scary exactly yeah. like, like Michael Bay this is what I'm into yeah. this is, these are the kind of women I find attractive yeah. I'm just going to yeah. cast them it's like Quentin Tarantino yeah. and feet like you know yeah. that sort of way he always has like, Quentin, Quentin Tarantino and feet well apparently he has a big thing for feet apparently that's what I hear right now yeah alright oh, that's an interesting there's, there's one. An insight to um, <laughs> but basically it's not the worst in the franchise it's, it's not the worst movie that I've seen all year um, but it's still not good it's I mean not it's great. Transformers so. action wise though come on mm. like I mean one thing I'll always say about Michael Bay is yeah. best second unit director in the game Yeah. if you have I mean you're talking about Tony Gilroy shooting the more emotional stuff yeah. for mm-hmm. Rogue One if you've got a, like a, you know, got an incredible director who knows how to do that intimacy in films mm-hmm. and really direct actors and you get Michael Bay in to I'd watch that film I'd watch the yeah. shit out of that film I'd watch, watch the, the shit, shit out of Michael out. Bay second unit directed uh, <laughs> James Bond film yeah and I mean as usual the special effects in this are absolutely amazing like you have to accredit him with that and in terms of like the actual action what's going on in the films you can actually tell what's going on this time because at points like <laughs> oh, in the Transformers movie no it gets so convoluted and there's just like metal flying everywhere that you can't tell who's where anymore yeah. it's slightly like it's less kind of complicated like it's more stupid the plot of this story but he's definitely simplified it and I think in that way maybe he is kind of taking on board what critics are saying before you know? we move on uh, Mark Wahlberg you replace Shia LaBeouf inexplicably mm-hmm. in the fourth film supposed to be yes. Jason Statham ended up in Mark Wahlberg yeah. how is he in it does he just sleepwalking through us ah yeah he's grand like he's just <laughs> <laughs> he's Mark Wahlberg yeah he's got that mullet now though like he has this mullet now I saw, yeah. I saw yeah I saw the post of it he has a mullet now what's that about like Mark Wahlberg with a mullet like. Mark Wahlberg with a mullet like and it's real proper like Hawkwind you know whoosh, like uh, Richard Hammond esque kind of you could kind of do a mullet thing if you move the beard around like you could Maybe. you know it's all kind Maybe of at the back you know, business like at the front go, it's going to go around at the back yeah you know? well this beard is going to be gone next week anyway so anyway we're going to move on Brian we move on to, uh, to Toy Show it's an Irish film that's yeah. opening tomorrow um, you have the director and so anybody who is, is watching this on Facebook or watching this on YouTube or Twitter um, we will put it out as an audio podcast afterwards Brian has an excellent interview with the director Tom Ryan. Tom Ryan. But this is a this is a heavy subject matter. Yeah, Brian. it is. Yeah, it is. It's, it's which is I mean, which is a good thing that films like this have been tackled. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and very timely as well. But it's basically about a young couple in their twenties uh, who decide to have an abortion. But as you'll hear in the interview with Tom Ryan, I mean, it's not really a film about abortion as such. It's more basically a love story that somehow kind of culminates with that, if you know that kind of way. But I mean, it's. It's handled in an interesting way. I mean, it doesn't really kind of cast any judgments on them and it doesn't really kind of debate, you know, the right and the wrong of it or any of that. Or even the fact that, you know, they have to leave the country in order to have an abortion and stuff like that. They really just kind of say, look, this is happening. It's not It's not the crux do. of the story. It's no. something that happens to these characters within exactly. the story. Yeah, yeah. and I, I can say, and to be honest, like, I think that's that's an interesting way of approaching it. You yeah. know, that sort of way. Yeah. The fact that it is just, it's just a part of the story and that's what they're doing, but it's not... the central focus of it you know so speaking speaking of something kind of similarly along those lines I was a big fan of Juno when Juno first came out yeah mm. very famous director who at the time came out and called Juno pro-life yeah which really bugged me because it was just a film about yeah. it was about a film about girls just, given that, yeah. that was the point of the film in a, in a similar way that that was it doesn't yeah. need to be one way or the other am I right yeah yeah I mean like because I remember I remember that scene in Juno like when and you know at least I, th- I suppose the argument I suppose you could have with Juno was was the fact that she had the choice yeah mm. she went in and made a choice you know that's what it is so calling a pro-life it, I don't think is the right way to describe that it's film. just a film and if a character driven film is a proper character driven yeah. film it'll evolve in a natural in a natural in a, way in a yeah natural and plus way. as well they'll be able to make their own choices you yeah. know that's what it is so I think and Twice Shy is the same as well because they're making a choice you know that's sort of it they're given that choice and they're allowed to do it but um yeah, it's an interesting film, and I, you know, I, I think it'll, uh, I think it'll definitely kind of spark debate, you know. So, yeah. so you enjoyed it anyway, or yeah, it's an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting film. It's an interesting. You recommend Cinema is in such a phenomenal place. Of course, it? yeah. I mean, it's almost cliche to say it now, but yeah. the other point I'd say about this as well is Arthur O'Hanlon and Pat Short are in it, and they're two comedic actors, but they're in this in a very kind of dramatic. Uh, film, you know, and it's interesting in how we how we cast them, and we talked about that in the interview. It's great. Well. It's great to see uh, actors like that, names like that. The mm-hmm. 
appearing in for the he was for his first time director young director yeah it can seem like a young guy mm-hmm. supporting a, a young Irish director like that that's really yeah. cool isn't it yeah no it's great yeah <laughs> sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. There. It's so hot in here. I'm People sorry. don't realize how hot it is here. It's, here. it's, it's here. really it's so it's hot. Really, really really it's so hot. Um, oh. The Hampstead, uh, Brendan Gleeson. Yes. Brian Keaton. Speaking of Irish. Speaking of Irish, that's something that I think Brendan Gleeson has done over the years. He's always mm-hmm. kind of come back and as his, as his sons have mm-hmm. as well and appeared and used their kind of weight and used their names uh, mm-hmm. to appear in you know these kind of smaller yeah. Irish movies. Gleeson yeah. did Perry's yeah. Bounty uh, with Killian Murphy a few years ago too. Uh, this is kind of unusual it's like a, one of those love stories it's like it yeah. should be a Nancy Myers movie yeah. kind of a love story and people in the latter stages of their mm-hmm. lives is it, lives is that right to say that's exactly it yeah yeah um, so he shares the screen with Diane Keaton in this movie and they're absolutely they're so cute together and they actually do have genuine chemistry which I was kind of surprised about but then again you have these two like really really talented actors so of course they're going to pull it out of the bag um, it's very kind of nice a bit twee a bit cheesy um, so basically it's one for like mams and grannies and it's kind of sweet and feel good and like not heavy like it's completely like totally light so I suppose like the other you know end of the spectrum depending it's, on what you're looking for this is like a subgenre weekend, now you know? for like you know those kind of geriatric no it's not geriatric but yeah. like you know the, the, the Marigold Hotel movies mm-hmm. did like three or four hundred million yeah. worldwide and yeah. there was going in style you know just yeah, a few yeah, Zach Braff ago the, as well tr- yeah. yeah Morgan Freeman Michael Caine Alan Alda definitely well I mean older people still go to the cinema just so there is like Slower, yeah, L- literally. No, they're arriving, no, the films don't open big. Slower. Yeah, yeah, the, film, <laughs> yeah. the films don't open big. The films kind of seem to have legs. Yeah, you know, so that with my big fat Greek wedding years mm-hmm. ago, and, then, and these films kind of become sleeper hits. Then, yeah, can you see this becoming a, a, a big hit? Can you see it finding an audience? Um, I mean, I can see it finding an older audience. I'm not sure about like it getting a big audience. It'll just depend on how they respond. Um, I don't see it doing like phenomenally well, but who knows? I mean, it's it's kind of a nice like you know alternate to the explosiveness of Transformers so we'll see how it all does all the counter programming going yes. in there guys thanks so much next week Baby Driver Despicable Me 3 mm-hmm. uh, The Will Ferrell The House yeah, The House, yeah. the house so, mm-hmm. comedy. So, we, so we've got a whole lot going on next week folks uh, if you want to win the tickets if you want to win those VIP passes to Odeon tell us who the Irish star of Transformers 4 was uh, comment below we'll pick a winner and tag them on Monday thanks so much for joining us we'll see you Thursday at 9pm